Okay, so um, I only have like 20 or 25 minutes, right? So um, probably um, my presentation today will be will be covering the narrowest the narrowest uh, uh, um, scope that uh, uh, in this workshop. But I thought that it should be it'd be okay for some presentation to be to have some narrow scope. So. Um, I'm going to focus on this uh, multi-antenna uh, technologies for 5G. Maybe I can um, skip this uh, slide because uh, I'm sure that some of the uh, operators in this, in this room probably have a better understanding uh, uh, about the service visions and use cases. Um, one, one thing I'd like to mention though here is in these uh, use cases and scenarios, um, maybe uh, three things uh, are common. Number one is a very high throughput data, data rate. And I do remember th that we had a discussion yesterday in a panel about uh, whether capacity is the main driver for 5G. And I, I fully agree with Magnus. Um, we do believe that the uh, capacity uh, increase is, is not, the, uh, not the driver for 5G, but one of the most important driver for 5G, just like it has been for the previous generation. Another common thing is uh, low latency, and we also heard uh, a lot from, uh, from the previous speaker. Um, this is the, uh, the requirements uh, the which um, we, Samsung, has been working on uh, uh, for the last few years. And uh, this has seven axes. And what I'm going to focus on is, even though we have like seven axes, actually the ITU has eight axes, okay? And, and uh, even though we have seven axes on this page, what I'm going to deal with is, um, I'm going to deal with those two axes, uh, maybe the peak data rate or the cell edge throughput. Those uh, capacity related requirements are the requirements that I am going to deal with um, for this talk today. So we have uh, like seven um, requirements. We call it internally the, requir uh, the rainbow, of, uh, rainbow of requirements because it has seven axes. And uh, particularly this uh, uh, multi-antenna technologies uh, seems to have a wide sort of a consensus um, in the industry and academia alike to address uh, this uh, increase the uh, capacity demands uh, on in terms of peak data rate as well as um, edge throughput. So I'm going to focus on these two technologies, but please do not uh, um, do not misunderstand the Samsung's 5G is just the just we are dealing with only two of the technologies. We actually we are dealing much more. Okay, just like what John mentioned, that we are also working on new waveforms and new multiple access schemes and the coding and modulation and new network architectures and flatter network and et cetera. But here, I'm going to focus on these two. So um, first, um, the multi-antenna technology is under six gigahertz and, and John mentioned also very nicely. Um, so this is the, I don't know whether it has a pointer. No, okay. So um, as you all know, we, uh, the 3HPP is already working on the standardization on this uh, MIMO. Um, right now we are in the study item phase. And there will be some work item still in release 13, followed by uh, the release 14 work item. So as you know, the release uh, 8, we had this uh, um, sort of a, a single digit MIMO. And release 10, we have this uh, uh, multi user MIMO uh, uh, on, on up to eight uh, transmission. But now we are working on um, go support more than uh, uh, eight and, uh, and utilizing both uh, horizontal um, dimension as well as also the uh, vertical. So this is the uh, simulation result. Uh, I'm sure that you guys have been seeing this kind of similar simulation result in, 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 in somewhere. So what we're actually doing is um, basically we have this uh, 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 eight by four and actually eight by four by um, two. So it's the 64 elements. 
And uh, as you can see from on, on the right hand side, um, the compare, uh, com uh, comparison between this, the uh, existing uh, multi MIMO with eight transmission antennas utilizing 64 uh, ports uh, it seems to be uh, uh, two to three times uh, 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 capacity in improvement uh, uh, in, in the cell. But this uh, multi uh, uh, antenna technologies like FD MIMO for lower frequency is mainly for increasing the system throughput, right? It's not really increasing the, your end user's throughput. Okay. And uh, this is something that uh, we have been we've done in 2013 actually. Uh, we started with uh, developing this uh, FDMIMO prototypes uh, at uh, 2.5 gigahertz, uh, having this 32 TRX. And um, starting last year, uh, this is the, uh, our second generation of FDMIMO uh, prototypes, which has uh, uh, 32 uh, also TRX. But uh, it has, uh, 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 the frequency we are using is 3.5 gigahertz. And we are actually supporting um, more than eight uh, UEs. So actually we are targeting to support up to 12 UEs. And um, in a single, very small form factor, is, uh, as you can see, the form factor is about 30 centimeters and 50 centimeters. Uh, in this small one board, we have this uh, RF and basement all together in a single board. And um, um, hopefully, the next um, in a few a few months, we will actually um, share a, a lot more detail about this experimental result in a in a in a outdoor environment. So going up to the uh, high frequency, um, we've been doing this uh, for multiple years, and this is our. Um, third generation of a millimeter wave test bed. Um, now, um, probably have seen this similar uh, uh, picture somewhere, but what, uh, th for those of you who haven't seen this picture, let me um, briefly explain. So this is the, uh, the base station RF units, which has the RF and antennas, has uh, 48 uh, antenna elements. And uh, unlike what uh, Gehardt, uh, 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 indicates earlier today about putting 64 antennas at the terminal. If the, uh, if the link budget requires that amount of antennas at the terminal, sure, we should, we should uh, uh, employ that. But what we actually did is we actually put only uh, four antennas, um, an act four antennas per channel, meaning that we have this, since we have uh, two channels, we have eight antennas per, per terminal. And this should provide enough link coverage for us, uh, for our need, okay? For our need means that uh, we have certain coverage, okay? We have certain um, transmit power. We have a certain sensitivity. And this configuration uh, suits us. So this is the, uh, we've been testing this uh, at 28 gigahertz. But again, um, um, we are not, particularly married to that frequency, 28. Um, a lot of people saying that this, you know, Samsung's married to 28 gigahertz. No, 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 we, we have nothing there, okay? Um, there, but there is a reason why we picked 28, because um, before we start this research, um, we, we did the extensive regulation study, okay, worldwide, Europe, Asia, and United States. And, 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 and we, because we like to select a frequency that have a highest chance of global spectrum, okay? And 28 seems to be one of the leading candidates, followed by 39, okay? So 28 and 39 uh, seems, to be, seems to have a good candidate. Of course, um, the lower the better, okay? The, if, we, if we can, if we, our mobile industry, in the industry can have a, a more than 500 megahertz in sub six gigahertz, hallelujah. That's, that's the best, okay? But I don't think that the, you know, there's anybody can um, claim that we can have like a few hundred megahertz contiguous bands in a sub six gigahertz. So that's why we are going up. And uh, the higher you go, of course, the less resistance 
okay, from the incumbents for, uh, uh, to, to for us to use this particular bands in, in the mobile application. So there's a trade-off, okay. But from the engineering perspective, lower the better, from the uh, propagation characteristic, etc. But the higher you go, the wider the spectrum you have, and less resistance. But as I mentioned earlier, there is a also engineering challenges uh, if you go in higher and higher, right? Spectral efficiency problem because of this, uh, you know, uh, components availability to support higher um, modulations, for example, uh, etc. So there's a trade-off, and. Um, in particular, this, in order for us to have this commercial millimeter wave system for 5G, okay, um, there's many hurdles, but uh, you know, some of the major hurdles is actually is on the component size. And that's why we've been actually working on um, components, especially the antennas and RFICs and basements. And, uh, uh, two frequency uh, the Samsung has been ex extensively, extensively working on, so are 28 and 60 gigahertz. As you can see, um, we've been actually testing um, these two frequencies, and we were successful to uh, to develop the uh, full, for example, full CMOS uh, um, um, RFIC for 60 gigahertz. Okay. And um, also the EVM numbers minus 25 dB is which is quite good, okay? Meaning that we can actually support uh, 16 QAM, right? So, um, but still, still, um, still the challenges still uh, remain, okay? Still remains. So I'm not saying that um, you know next year we will have this uh, millimeter wave commercialization or you know good looking. Um, uh, smartphones will be available utilizing these chips. No, it's, it's, it will not be the case. We're still working on uh, improving these um, efficiencies and um, power consumptions and uh, et cetera. So when it comes to millimeter wave, uh, um, you need, we need to, industry need to have a channel model that we can, we, everyone can use right, uh, for us to uh, develop the system spec and, and, and compared each different technologies. So um, uh, we've been actually doing a lot of a channel measurement and testing in, in various locations worldwide. Um, this particular um, example uh, shows us the, the channel measurement at, uh, at uh, New York City. And uh, we, we've done this uh, actual measurement at New York City as well as uh, uh, ray tracing simulation in the exactly the same spot. Okay. Why doing that? Because we would like to know how this measurement and ray tracing um, relate. Okay. And this is the, uh, some sort of a calibration efforts between the measurement and um, simulation. And we found that uh, there is very good uh, alignment between this measurement and the ray tracing. So using this uh, uh, calibration, what we, what we are doing is uh, basically we cannot possibly um, measure entire cities, right? It's, it's not possible. So once we select certain spots uh, with the regional amount of you know, spots and do the calibration between the measurement and the um, simulation, once we, are, we have some confidence on the model, then we actually apply this model on the larger blocks. So for example, 28 gigahertz, and this is the ray tracing simulation result and 60 gigahertz. As you can see, uh, of course, it has a different uh, uh, conditions, right? Um, it has different frequency, it has a different bandwidth, but um, we, it, through this process, we understand better, okay, that how the millimeter wave system, multi-cell system, performs in a typical city and uh, urban environment. So, okay, this is the uh, just um, global activities. Okay, um, so, We've seen this similar um, sanitization schedule you know, yesterday and today, um, and this is the expected uh, timeline. Of course, uh, the RISPP has yet to you know, finalize this uh, overall uh, sanitization schedule, but this is some somewhat expected schedule, and um, we strongly hope that um, we can uh, start uh, 
like FD MIMO, for example, on the 6 gigahertz SI is already happening, okay? And we hopefully we can also start the work item and, and finish this uh, uh, FD MIMO or multi antenna technology under 6 gigahertz in release 14. Uh, similar thing also we expect to, to we hope to happen. Um, we, we need to do this uh, study item first in release 13 for high frequency, uh, followed by uh, work item description and release 15 time frame. And uh, one, one, one event that I'd like to mention is uh, Korea. We have uh, this uh, important international event in early 2018, uh, Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. And um, both Korean um, government, as well as the uh, Korean operators, are uh, very f committed to, to, um, to, to do this 5G uh, trial service in, in Pyeongchang. And uh, we are working with them, and we are, working, we are talking to some other international uh, companies as well. Another event is, uh, is Tokyo, uh, Summer Olympics in 2000. 20, that could be another major um, event um, for this our cellular uh, industry, a 5G um, um, industry, to to participate and and, and, and 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 showcase not just showcase but actually start this uh, commercialization of 5G technology around that time frame. Okay, so I think that's that's it. Um, I hope. Uh, no, my um, presentation is uh, a bit educative tip to, to some of you. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much. I think we have time for one or two questions. So uh, anyone want to go first? No questions, perhaps. Um, There's one. Yeah, there is one. Perfect. Yeah, I, I was thinking about sort of, um, well, I have been thinking a lot about things like uh, implementing MIMO on the lower frequencies. And and um, and one of the things I, I uh, you know, in, at least in Europe, the regulation is uh, for um, uh, for transmit on, on bands is in ERP, which includes the antenna gain and the power. So I was thinking about what, what, what the industry thinks here is that, and, and, and typically in Sweden it's limited to, f I think it's all over VOPEX, it's, it's uh, 5,000 watts ERP, mm -hmm. which means that, uh, so, and, and um, so, so I was thinking about, so now when we are, are, are getting higher and higher antenna gains, um, um, are, you, are you thinking of, of um, I mean, I, I, the way I see it, it's an opportunity because then we can lower the output power of the base stations. And then if you distribute the, the power amplifiers, they don't have to be much at all. So exactly. is that the way you, you foresee yeah, actually, it? Yeah. Or, or is it that you foresee that you could increase the uh, ERPs <laughs> even more now and, and see them push the regulators to go to 50,000 watts ERP instead? <laughs> In our simulation, actually, and also our proto uh, prototype development, we assume same max ERP can be kept. Okay, so our simulation also you know, assumed that as well. Um, I don't think, I don't know, is this the question to the regulatory bodies, okay, whether we can actually increase the ERRP because we actually have multiple antennas at the base. I, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. So we, I keep the, uh, the same ERRP. Uh, on the other hand, um, relate to that, um, 60 gigahertz, for example, okay, uh, I'm sure probably you, you, you know that the um, 60 gigahertz max EIRP is, is a function of the antenna array gain. Okay, so in the in United States, for example, max EIRP allowed is about 85 dBm, okay? On the condition that your antenna gain is about 50 something, okay? So if you have a lower antenna gain, then your max EIRP drops. Okay, so that has certain uh, relationship with the antenna array and the max ERP, but the cellular domain, I don't think, um, you know, there's a, any good reason to change the max ERP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what really becomes interesting, I don't know exactly how things are doing otherwise in the world, but, but uh, yeah. typically in Sweden we have, for the operators, we have these uh, uh, network companies like Net4Mobility, and, mm -hmm. and uh, t today they are f putting up uh, 
uh, multiband antennas everywhere. So it's typically five band antennas. So they have uh, two dipoles right now for, for in each antenna, and and uh, and they so they can transmit with two transmitters at each band. And um, and and that sort of gets us into an issue which we never ever address nowadays, but we did a lot 15 years ago, sort of possible uh, health issues or or at mm -hmm. least the sort of it, hygienic issues. issues. Mm -hmm. and, 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 we're gonna, and and we're going to and 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 uh, one of the things that if we increase the ERPs, increase the number of bands, we're actually going to have, have uh, end up in a situation where we're going to have uh, restriction zones r around base station antennas. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we, we need to uh, thank uh, one in a row here once more. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>